Hi guys, and welcome to another exciting episode of Frog Watch. Okay, so I'm back at work here and I wanted to check on the tadpoles and as you can see they have all hatched out. Now there's there's thousands of them, a huge mass, a big huge mat of tadpoles in the pond now. You can just about make out that they are all kind of sitting on top of this kind of mass of jelly-like substance which is the remnants of the eggs which they hatched out of. Now I'm a little bit concerned because um, there's so much pondweed in here that the tadpoles are kind of forced right up to the surface. and um, they're going to sort of struggle. You can see a lot of them aren't moving. Um, I think they might be struggling for oxygen a little bit and they're going to be competing for food sources because they're so uh, clumped together. Now normally you don't really sort of need to worry about it too much because nature finds a way. But um, I'm just worried that uh, a lot of the ones in the middle of this mass aren't going to be able to find their way out into the, the pond to be able to uh, start swimming around. So I might have to do something about that. Okay, so I'm going to grab a little bit of pond water and I'm going to start getting some plants uh, ready and set up into my tank. I've pulled out a little bit of weed over here, so we're going to just take a couple of bits here and uh, we're going to take these inside and uh, then put into my tank. Um, now, I'm not entirely sure about all the species here. I'll have a closer look when I get these inside, but I'm just going to pop them into, into the uh, beaker there and um, we'll bring them inside and put them into the tank. Now, this one... Uh, is kind of it's got a big old mass of root on the bottom and it's, the roots are kind of full of sediment now um, because I'm putting it into the tank I don't need such long roots because they don't need to go into the um, into the sediment so much as any sort of a shallow layer of uh, sort of pebbles and stones and things so I can, I'm going to pull off some of these um, these roots make them a little bit shorter uh, this would of course be a lot easier if I could use both hands uh, rather than having to hold a camera in the other hand um, now you can see I'm wearing gloves in this point um, I'm probably being overly, overly cautious here but um, pond water can have all sorts of uh, microbes and things in so just to kind of be on the safe side I'm wearing gloves and of course I'll be washing my hands uh, afterwards. Okay so that's a nice big one, some nice long leaves uh, there or long stems rather. So we'll take that, put that into our pot and uh, yeah, we'll take a, a few more strands. If I can find something uh, good in there. You can also see over here there's some little bugs and things. Uh, if I can get my sorry, my camera work is terrible here, it's a bit shaky. But some things moving around in the sediments, there you can see them quite clearly. Those are sort of the water beetles, I think there might be some uh, water louses in there. I'm definitely going to want to get some of them in my tank because they're pretty great for uh, eating up the detritus that you find in. They'll eat the uh, tadpoles feces and things, so they're keeping the tank kind of clean. And, uh, and it's interesting to have a bit more life in there. So there we go, so that's some um, uh, pond weed there. I'm just going to grab my stick here and um, what, I'm, what I'm thinking is is pulling out some of the weed from underneath the mass where they are from here. And just so that they're, they sink a little bit lower in the water so that when they want to swim away from this mat of jelly um, then they've actually got more space to do so. Because at the moment I just, I just don't think there's the room for them to swim away if they wanted to. Now when the tadpoles hatch, for the first few days they do stay attached to this jelly and they will feed on it. Um, so, you know, you expect them to kind of stay on, on, the, on the mat of jelly from the eggs for a few days. But then um, once they uh, have sort of fed on it a little bit, they want to start swimming away. Now at the moment I just think a lot of these things are going to get stuck and they're going to stay there and they're just going to end up dying. So I'm probably going to start pulling away some of this weed just to kind of give them a little bit more space so that if they want to, if they need to, they can actually swim away. You can see there, it's a whole load swimming free as I've just kind of pushed them further down into the water. So that's what we can do. Let's go inside and have a look at what we've got. Okay, so this is the first one. Not entirely sure what species this is, but there is something very interesting on this one. On the underside of some of the leaves, these little sort of jelly blobs. Now I'm guessing these are eggs of some sort. Some sort of creatures laid some eggs on the leaves. There's a couple on this plant. Uh, we should be able to find another one in a moment. Now I'm not entirely sure what those things are. I was thinking at first maybe it was some snail eggs as possible. Um, but I'm actually thinking, having looked into it a little bit, there's a possibility these could be newt eggs. Now there are newts in the pond and we'll get to see one of those in a little bit. And uh, they, they like to, to lay eggs singly on the underside of leaves. So that would be great if they are newt eggs. I mean, a little bit of a dilemma because newts do eat tadpoles. And uh, this is this is frog watch, not newt watch. So we're going to have to probably put them back in the pond. But uh, anyway, this is Elodia. I know that that's definitely Elodia. That's the one I pulled the roots off. And that's a really good oxygenator. That's a really good plant to have in your tank. 
Now, I'm not really sure what these other ones are. I mean, they. For, I'm thinking they may all be slightly variations of um, Elodia. There's a few different species of Elodia, and they all kind of look a little bit different. Um, but I'm not entirely sure what those things are. Okay, so here we are. I've weighted down uh, the plants uh, with with the rocks so that the uh, the root end will sort of stay to the ground, and uh, so they're not sort of just sort of floating around free. And there we go. So we've got a few species in there. I'm going to get a lot more because I think we need a lot more plant life in there for good oxygenation, um, provide a little bit of a food source for the tadpoles when they go in there, and um, and uh, they will oxygenate the water um, and give somewhere uh, for the tadpoles to hide. That's very important as well. <clears throat> now this is interesting. This is the um, pot of water that I got out of the pond, which the plants came in. And you can see a little creature moving about there. That is a damselfly nymph. Um, <clears throat> now, damselflies are uh, obviously similar to dragonflies. You might be familiar with how they look. Uh, I, I will go into uh, the details of um, the differences between them in, probably in a future video where we start looking at some of the other life about. But you can get a really good look at this. If we hold this up here, there's a little bit of sediment at the bottom, make it a little bit difficult to see. But at the moment, there we go. He's wriggling about. Um, now they will they uh, will stay in the water for a while, and then obviously uh, later on in the summer they will start crawling out on some of the leaves, and they will uh, hatch out into uh, adult uh, damselflies and uh, be beautiful blue and red colours. I think that we get in in this pond. But there we go. Yeah, so I'm really looking forward to looking at some of the other life that we get in in our pond. And now this is really interesting. I've been pulling out some of the weed. Uh, from the pond, just trying to, uh, as I said earlier, to make some more space um, for the tadpoles to swim about in. And there's uh, something very interesting I want you to see. If we can uh, get some of this weed out of the way, you should be able to see a little bit of movement if you can put up with the shaky cam. Unfortunately, I'm just doing this on, uh, on my phone. Uh, but there we go, you can see a little thing um, crawling about. Now that's a newt. Now as I said, there might be some new eggs on that plant we put in. Um, because this, I believe, is a smooth newt, which is a good thing, um, really. Um, it could be a pale newt, but I think the pale newts are a little bit smaller than this, and um, I think the coloration of this lends itself to be more of a smooth newt. It's not a great crested newt. Um, they are very rare. And there he goes, into the back into the pond there. The great crested newts are very rare and are actually protected, and it's illegal to disturb them and catch them. So if that was a great crested newt, what I'm doing right now is illegal. But I'm pretty confident that's actually a smooth newt. So I've pulled out some of this um, uh, weed, and I've kind of spread the tap holes out a little bit, and you can see some sort of swimming free now. There should be a lot more space. Now, I don't want to disturb them too much because as I say that after they hatch, they do spend some time attached to the jelly feeding on it. So I don't want to push them about too much, but I do want to make sure that they can get out if they want to. So uh, yeah, you can see a bit closer up there. I've kind of pushed some of the weed out of the way there and uh, you can see uh, it's a little bit difficult to tell, but some of them are swimming away and they're sort of, when I've given them a bit more space, they kind of swim out freely. And uh, and yeah, so uh, sorry about my finger at the top of the screen there. Terrible camera camera work there. Uh, right here we go. This is the tank. How I've uh, finished up. I've put in a few more plant leaves. So there are actually some different varieties as well to what we saw earlier. There's another one there. So I think I've got quite a good variety of plant life in the tanks. So I'm really pleased about that. And there's plenty of places for the tadpoles to hide. And um, uh, interesting thing on this one is there is definitely some life been brought in into the tank. Uh, you can't see it very well here, but there's definitely a snail in there. I would, I would like to get a few more snails. I think there's a beetle or one of the water louse things in there. Or you can't see it on this video. But what you can see is that little black th uh, thing hanging down from the top of the water surface. That's a tadpole. I think I've got four tadpoles that have been brought in with the plants. So I didn't intend to put them in, but I saw them in there and I thought, well, you know, I've, I've brought them in. They came in sort of attached to the plants. That, um, and I put them in and I thought, well, you know what, there's our first four. So there's one there and there's another one around the side here. Although I don't think you can see it very well because my, my camera work has been pretty, pretty shoddy. I try to cover up this light um, so we can see a bit better. Unfortunately, you just kind of see my finger. And uh, the sun was kind of shining on the screen, so I couldn't really tell where I was pointing the camera at this point. So I'm not even really pointing it at uh, the right place. But there it is. You can just see it off to the right side of the screen there. There's a little black line hanging down from top. They do like to attach themselves to the side. There he is, right in the center there. Unfortunately, obscured by the light. But they do kind of attach themselves to the side and hang down. 
Uh, but there we go. That's it for today. That's the um, um, our tanks. And uh, I'm really excited. I'm going to put up another video very shortly and uh, where I'm going to introduce all the tadpoles. I'm going to get a whole bunch of tadpoles and put them in the tanks. I'm really looking forward to that. Now, uh, so you can have maybe two or three per litre of water. And I've got about 14 litres in there. So I'm going to put maybe sort of between 20 and 30 um, 35 ish tadpoles in there and that should be all that the uh, the tank will support I want to get a few snails I want to get a few water lice and some beetles and things and uh, yeah I'm really interested to see what kind of develops and um, we're going to keep an eye on the pond and uh, I'm going to um, go into more detail about some of the other life I might do a little bit more detail on the different types of newts that we saw. There's water boatmen, there's ponds, skaters, there's all sorts of things I'm really looking forward to exploring. Not just the tadpoles and frogs, but all the other life that we see in the pond. So thank you very much for joining me and I hope you join me next time when we introduce our tadpoles into the pond. That should be up in the next couple of days. So thanks and I'll see you later.